Hello students, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll solve the first writing passage of the April 2018 USSAT, Benjamin Banneker Marking Time. Benjamin Banneker gained local fame for making a working clock in 1753, a time when few people owned clocks, let alone understood their mechanics. So here, I need to use a pronoun for clocks. Few people owned clocks, let alone understood their mechanics, right? Not they are. Option A is the abbreviation for they are, so that's wrong. This is the abbreviation for it is, so that's wrong. And this is the singular pronoun, so that won't work with clocks. We need to say T-H-E-I-R, there. A 22-year-old free black man living in Maryland, Banneker learned how to make the clock by examining the insides of a watch a merchant friend had lent him. His sharp skills in measuring the passage of time would eventually lead Banneker to the job of determining the official borders of the new United States capital. Studious from an early age, Banneker completed his formal education only up through algebra, at which point his father pulled him out of school to help on the family farm. A former teacher, however, encouraged Banneker to pursue his education independently and lent him the books to do so. Banneker also studied the night sky. He charted how the migration of the stars relates to the passage of time. Now, I need to connect the sentences here. Banneker also studied the night sky, charting how the migration of the stars relates to the passage of time. So C should be the best answer. If I say he charted how the migration of the stars, then both of these would be independent sentences and I can't join them with a comma, so A is wrong. I can't start a new sentence with charting because that second sentence would then be incomplete. And if I say he also charted, then again, I have an independent sentence after the comma, which is not permitted. So C. When the wealthy Ellicott family built a flour mill not far from his farm, Panica befriended George Ellicott. Ellicott's knowledge about science and astronomy impressed him. Okay. Which choice most effectively establishes the main topic of the paragraph? So here I'm talking about the friendship that Banneker made with George Ellicott. So in the 1770s, Banneker made a fortuitous friendship. So this seems like a good option. Something that is fortuitous is something that is uh, fortunate, something that would have good consequences. So I like A. The 1770s were filled with social and political upheaval. So this is not a good introduction because I need to talk about their friendship here. Banneker's life was significantly influenced by several people. Um, so here, I think the focus is not on several people, but on this one friendship. So A is better than C. Banneker continued his studies in science and math. So this again does not introduce the friendship as well as A does. Banneker befriended George Ellicott. And now I have to combine the sentences whose knowledge about science and astronomy impressed him. Because when I say Ellicott's knowledge, I can say that with whose, that's concise. Of whom knowledge is not correct, that doesn't convey the meaning I'm trying to say. From whom his knowledge, again, that distorts the meaning. While Ellicott's knowledge impressed him, there is no necessity for while, which is a contrasting uh, connector. Uh, so here, the best answer would be T. They met regularly at the flour mill and Banneker's home, where they met to discuss debates in astronomy. Um, they met regularly at the flour mill and Banneker's home to discuss debates in astronomy, right? The fact that they met regularly has already been said. So this is a repetition. And even this and this are a repetition. So C is the best answer. From Ellicott, Banneker borrowed books by authors such as James Ferguson, a leading astronomer of the time. 
In that same decade, the US became a fledgling nation with no permanent capital. Federal legislators met in eight different northern cities before they decided that as part of a broader compromise, a capital should be built farther south. His cousin George likely recommended Banneker for the job. In 1791, President Washington issued a directive. The capital would be situated on the Potomac River and encompass a 10 mile square that included the booming ports of Georgetown, then a part of Maryland and Alexandria, Virginia. Leading the team to determine the capital's boundaries were Major Andrew Ellicott, a well-known land surveyor who needed a capable assistant. Okay, so first I have to determine the correct verb. So I obviously have to use a singular verb because it refers to this person. So leading the team to determine the capital's boundaries was Major Ellicott, not were, and will be does not make sense because we are speaking of the past and have been is also incorrect. Have anyway is plural, so that doesn't make sense. Land surveying, the art of measuring horizontal and vertical distances between objects demands a strong command of trigonometry and astronomy, particularly to the ability to charge mathematically the course of celestial bodies in relation to the curvature of the rotating earth skills Banneker possessed. So when I'm saying that it demands a strong command of trigonometry and astronomy, particularly the ability, this too is incorrect. So it's not A, particularly about is incorrect. So particularly is what we are looking for. I can say in particular, but not in particularly. So this also is wrong. To make this paragraph most logical, sentence three should be placed. Okay, so when we were reading it, you must have noticed that this is abrupt, right? His cousin, George, who is the person that we are referring to, whose cousin? So we know that George Ellicott was Banneker's friend, and there is a major Andrew Ellicott who has been introduced here, right? So, uh, right. So then I think it should come after sentence five, because I've introduced Andrew Ellicott and then his cousin is Ellicott's cousin, George, recommended Banneker for the job. And then I'm talking about how Banneker was suitable because he possessed the required skills. So sentence three should come uh, after sentence five. Banneker and the rest of Major Ellicott's crew set up camp on Jones Point in early March, 1791 a peninsula extending into the Potomac River, the point offered an expansive view of the territory. Additionally, a National Park Service plaque at Jones Point commemorates the men's contributions in shaping the capital. Okay, so here I'm talking about their contribution and how they set up the camp here and then, you know, they kind of described and they kind of set up the capital. And this plaque that I'm talking about commemorates the men's contribution. So I should say something about the present, right? I need to move from the past to the present. So today is a good answer. Today that plaque commemorates the men's contributions, right? Um, additionally, it doesn't make sense because I'm not adding an additional point of information to the previous sentence. Um, not surprisingly, a National Park Service plaque at Jones Point. So again, I don't think this is as good a connector as today because I'm moving from the past to the present. So D is better. And after some time doesn't make sense because then I would have to stick to the past tense. So D is the best answer. A National Park Service plaque at Jones Point commemorates the men's contribution. So commemorates means to celebrate. So that's the best option. To memorize is to kind of, you know, remember something, to uh, feed something into memory. So that doesn't make sense here. To magnify is to enlarge. So that doesn't make sense here. And to fossilize is to preserve uh, as a fossil. So none of those make sense in context. 
On a clear day looking north across the water, visitors can see the domed capital building rising towards the sky. Um, the writer wants to add the following sentence. Visitors can also enjoy activities such as fishing and kayaking. Should the writer make this addition here? So I don't think that makes sense here because it's important to kind of talk about the contribution of Banneker and the other members of the crew in establishing this capital, right? So what visitors can do apart from, you know, celebrating that uh, structure is not relevant. So I'll go with a no answer uh, because it's uh, strays from the paragraphs focus on Banneker's publications. No, it's not about Banneker's publications. It tacks on irrelevant information at the end of the passage. Yeah, this information is not relevant to this celebration of what Banneker did. So D is the best answer. Okay, so let's grade this. Writing B, C, A, D, C. B, C, A, D, C. And uh, D, C, C, D, A, D. D, C, C, D, A, D. Okay, great. So we got all correct. Hope this exercise helped. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.